Welcome back guys. So I will be taking the part three in this lecture and it is about creating a new decoupled CMS website which you have started in the first part and now we are into part three and I suggest you to please visit the first two part before coming to this part because this is built on the foundations laid on the first two parts as well as the code. So rendering content on the website is my topic today and what you should be able to do after attending the complete lecture. So once again, I request that you should complete the lecture from start to finish and be patient and it will definitely help you understand about the decoupled website and you'll get the best, best value out of it. If you stick to the end, you'll be getting benefited. So this lecture will cover the following topics, creating a custom razor page, loading a blog post from its identifier, accessing the other properties of a content item and loading a blog post from a custom slug. And then finally generating the slug using a custom pattern. So I have now kept the this Kaushik's blog post which was created in the previous lecture, lecture number two, part two. So please visit that. So I've already created that blog post. Now we'll work on this blog post. So my application is still running. Let me try here in the solution explorer pages and i'll have to create a new page and call this as just follow me as i walk through blog post.cshtml that and add new item and go for razor page okay and call this blog post blog post.cshtml so a page is created for me with the basic template and i will just re be replacing this page with the content that i have on my clipboard so it's like this so at page again at page directive is the same at top so this is the page this is the page model so front slash blog post slash id within curly braces so id will be evaluated and this is function this is actually you can change it to the way it was at code also the same block code block this is and from root public string id so a public property id property with getter and setter is created over here and this id property is actually received through model binding from the root that is from this id within curly braces and then this is the blog post and whatever ID is sent as through the URL will be written over here. So now I will open the URL. I will just save this and I will come back to the, you know, content to the browser and I will just go back to the local host and put So now I have, you know, I have um, given the request of this URL localhost colon port slash blog post slash one. And here we got the first blog post. This is the blog post one. This is the ID and this comes from this code. So is it marvelous? Isn't it marvelous? So this is what we are expecting and we have achieved this. So I have been able to basically um, know what a decoupled CMS website even at this stage because I am able to customize uh, with the back end from the database I am able to customize the front end okay with code now in this route the URL segment named within quotes ID is automatically assigned to the ID property it's automatically rendered to the ID property this is the ID property and which is rendered by at the rate you know this is c sharp code at the rate id syntax now next is i will what is loading a blog post from its identifier so so far we have seen that we have loaded the blog post from an id right now we'll change that so i will change this part of the code and 
I will replace this with a new code. So this is at page and then this part is the same. First line is the same at page directive followed by at inject, at inject directive. So this at inject actually injects an object of this type orchard core here orchard core dot i orchard helper and I name this instance orchard and then this is at the rate this is C sharp code variable blog post equals await this is asynchronous programming so await on orchard dot get item by id async and passing this id and this is the blog post and this part is again the same from route and uh, string id this is a id property okay now what we do here now I will go back okay and here I will in the content items page click on the blog post okay to load this blog post and what I am aiming to do is I will just copy this part uh, following localhost slash port sorry colon port slash admin slash content slash content items I will have to copy this this is the identifier what I am trying to do is to copy the identifier and I will this use this to load the blog post so I will copy it if it is correctly copy just copy it and then I will open the URL open the URL blog post here I have already copied this part this is the identifier then I will just get rid of this then blog post and then slash that identifier paste enter and again I've been able to load it with the identifier see this is the identifier now it's not the ID so this is the same blog post Kaushik's blog post one now in this code you can see that display text property is used to render the title of the blog post okay this is used to render title of the blog post this property is common to every content items so is the content item id or author for instance however each content type defines a unique set of dynamic properties like the markdown part that we added in the content modeling section in the part 2 of this series so please visit the part 2 if you haven't done to know about the markdown part and the content modeling now the dynamic properties of a content item are available in the content property as a JSON document so we'll edit the razor page by adding some lines so I have added this extra line at the rate orchard dot console log blog post okay now what I will do I will just save it uh, save all and again the blog page is open it was already running so f12 developer tools I will take out F12 and then click on this console I have refreshed now the browser now you can see this content item ID it is there okay and if you just uh, expand this you can see everything content blog post markdown part title part content item ID which was this identifier content type blog post display text Kaushik's blog post latest to everything so that means we are fine how we access other properties of a content item okay so I have now highlighted the part that I was just talking about now all the properties of the current content item are displayed including the content property as you have seen here content which contains all the dynamic parts we have configured for the blog post content type okay and we have seen the markdown we have seen the markdown body part this is the markdown body part 
I am creating some test markdown. Okay, that's what we did in the WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get editor. Okay, and title part is Kashik's blog post one. Now I have just injected this code on this on this blog post page, and then save this. Go back to our blog, refresh it, and you can see markdown content is already here. I am creating some text markdown, which was the which was here, um, which I have shown. This is the markdown markdown body part. I am creating some test markdown. Okay, and that was achieved through this code within paragraphs at blog post dot content dot markdown body part dot markdown. Now we can process the markdown content and convert it to HTML with this code at await orchard dot markdown dot to HTML async, and then to string blog post dot content dot markdown body part. This is this code. Dot markdown. Save this. Come back to the site. Refresh. And we have got this again in a line below. The same line is being written, but this is the HTML part. Now we will be loading a blog post from a custom slug. So even though we can load blog posts from their content item ID, which we have done, this is not user friendly and a good SEO optimization is to reuse the title in the URL. So in the Orchard Code CMS, the alias part allows to provide a custom user friendly text to identify a content item. So let's, so in the admin section again, we open the content definition, okay, content types, and then blog post. So at the end, so I now click add parts over here. And in this add part, select alias and save here. Now I will be moving alias under the title. Okay, and click on save. So title alias markdown body and blog post. Now I come to edit the blog post. Now I've got a title below which alias and then markdown body. Okay, so now I can enter some text on this alias to demonstrate you my what I want to do. Say new day. and then publish and then we now update the razor page to change some code to use the alias instead of the content item id which we have earlier used in both the url and in the way we load the content item so here what i will do is instead of this id i will change it with slug with the word slug and at inject will still be the same and here the var blog post will, will now change to orchard dot get content item by handle async content item by this part will change by handle async and within a pair of uh, uh, circular braces, I will write dollar sign and then within a pair of quotes, alias, alias was the part which I just formed and alias colon slug. Okay, this is that slug and then semicolon is giving the slug does not exist okay so i need to change this to slug from id of course 
<laughs> logical isn't it it was previously i didn't know it is slug all right i don't need to rebuild the application that's what uh, was done when we actually changed the project file to make this property you know preserve compilation reference as true right so now let's get back to let's again save it get back to my site and so great i have now browsed to localhost colon port slash blog post slash new day which was our alias and we have sting into the same blog post so this custom slug is now demonstrated it is now proven that it is working then the final thing to be shown today is generating the slug using a custom pattern now let's go back to the admin dashboard again all right the alias part provides some custom settings in order to so let's go back to the uh, blog post and edit so this is edit blog post and this alias part this alias part provides some custom settings in the order to let it be generated automatically in our case we want it to be generated from the title alias from the title automatically to provide such parameters the cms uses a template language called liquid template language together with some custom functions to manipulate content items properties so orchard provides a generally suitable default pattern now i will edit the content definition of the blog post and for alias part click on edit okay so content definition of the blog post content definition of the blog post and for the alias part i will click on content definition now i am into the editing the content definition of the blog post and for the alias part alias where is the alias this line i will click edit and it this gets me to the edit part alias now you can see here this pattern is within double curly braces model dot content item dot display text and slugify this is the filter so this is the liquid language you know liquid template this is also used for the shopify now this will in the this pattern text box you you have this pre filled pattern now this will dynamically extract this will dynamically this pattern will dynamically extract the display text property of a content item and in our case the title okay and call the slugify filter on this values which will turn the title into a value that can be used in the slugs so accordingly we'll use the we'll edit the blog post content items so i am again into the manage content okay so this is the blog post manage content and i will click on edit again and this time i will remove this alias all right and then i will click publish and continue publish now after clicking publish if i click on edit you'll see that alias was now changed automatically it is given some alias kaushik s blog post 1 okay now i can open this url with this this is the slug custom slug so what i'll do again i will delete i will highlight this part from admin till end and then blog post and then this is a new day it is not this is a new day but this is this alias in my case this is generating this alias copy and then paste it over here all right again we are back to the blog uh, blog is a blog you can remember that this is the blog we created in the first instance now i have been able to do it with slug custom slug I'm browsing to the same over there uh, 
loading the blog post from a custom slug. Finally, I will now be generating a slug using a custom pattern. So this was the part already covered with the custom pattern that was I have shown that uh, liquid template. So that from that custom pattern, from the title, you have generated this slug. So this is the title, Kaushik's blog post one. And alias is now generated from this title. So you have got the same alias as the title. And if you go back again to where I was, so this was the title and this is the custom slug as well. So we have covered a lot of ground today. What we have covered again is we have covered this creating a custom razor page, loading a blog post from its identifier, accessing the other properties of a content item and loading a blog post from a custom slug and generating the slug using a custom pattern. So we are through with this part. Thank you.